After last week's Entertainment Weekly article about the Wheel of Time, you might have thought that we were at the end of the news articles about the Wheel of Time. But if you thought that, you would be wrong. In this week's Wheel of Time news video, we'll be hitting all of the Wheel of Time related news stories from the past week, including a couple more articles about the show, some new photos, and some really cool stuff going down in the community. We will also hit the winner of the meme contest from last week and launch a new contest for this week. So join me as we go through all of the news and notes from the past week on the Wheel of Time TV show and in the community. <laughs> Welcome to the weekly Wheel of Time news. Quick thank you to the video's sponsor, audible.com, but more on them in a bit. Let's hit the spoiler warning for this video. Today's video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of yellow with no major spoilers, but there are going to be some minor, non-plot based spoilers, mostly just background info. Even if you haven't read the series, you should be good to watch the video, but watch at your own risk if you want to completely avoid anything that could be considered a spoiler. So let's kick things off with another feature article, this time in TV Guide. There isn't much in terms of an article actually. In fact, it barely says a whole lot of anything. The article mentions Moraine as an Aes Sedai leading three friends on an epic journey. It mentions Trollocs being a mix of practical effects and CGI. And then it tells us that we are going to fall in love with a horse named Bella. Now I've got to say this is the first major publication to mention Bella specifically. None of the information from the article though is new, but what we did get from it is a never before seen picture of Moraine. So please forgive the poor quality of the picture here. The digital copy of the TV guide is not out yet. So this is just a print version in the photo. But let's take a second and talk about this picture. For one, Moraine appears to be wearing slightly different clothing than the other shots that we've seen of her even if her cloak is still the same. Now she is sticking with the blue theme though. So I think that's gonna be pretty standard with Moraine. She's gonna be blue. Now I know this could be complete wishful thinking, but all of the pics I've seen of Rosamund as Moraine make me feel like she's gonna be really, really good in that role. Again, we haven't really heard her talk yet. I just think she's gonna be really great. She has kind of already taken over my headcanon for what Moraine looks like, so that's exciting. We also get to see Aldeeb in this picture looking really badass. That's a very pretty horse. Uh, the big question I think in all of this though is, what the hell is Maureen doing? I mean, it literally looks like she's being chased by a Nazgul uh, or, or riding her horse up and down the beach. It really looks like sand, um, which makes me wonder what kind of body of water she would be riding a horse up and down the beach on. The only real bodies of water that they come in contact to throughout the first and second books that I can think of are some rivers. I'm not sure. I can't think of any rivers that have a sandy beach like this. So I'm curious what it is. Let me know in the comments of the video what you think Maureen is doing here in this picture and where she is. So next up, let's talk about an article on the Wheel of Time published by Screen Rant and written by Robert Hutton. Now in the article, he responds to showrunner Rafe Judkin's comments about the series in his Q&A from last week's related Entertainment Weekly article. Now to recap, last week Rafe did a Q&A in which he was asked about Barney's beard in the picture. And Rafe answered by saying, we aged up the Emmonsfield Five from the books because sometimes TV shows with a bunch of 17 year olds as leads feel more like young adult and Wheel of Time isn't young adult. Now in the article, the author asserts that the decision to age the actors and actresses up for the series is a mistake and it undermines the book's appeal. His argument is basically this. One of the key things about the Wheel of Time is that the characters are young, sheltered, and naive to the ways of the world, and that the story shows them being corrupted and maturing basically as time goes on. He argues that the reason for the change is likely to make the show racier and more graphically violent and full of nudity and sex like Game of Thrones, and that Amazon is concentrating too much on making the show Game of Thrones and less on what makes the Wheel of Time great. So I have some thoughts on this, and I would say at its core, his argument does not really hold much weight. So let's go ahead and break this down. For one, all of the characters from the Two Rivers, regardless of age, are sheltered and naive about the ways of the world. Nynaeve in the books is around 25 years old, and she's still in awe of a city like Barillon, as the boys were. She's never left the Two Rivers either. Very few of the villagers have. So aging the characters up a few years to match the actors' appearances is not gonna change the fact that they're naive and don't know anything about the world. And it's also not like Rafe said that we're making a 17 year old Egwene into a 30 year old character on the show. She's still young, it's just not super young. Now to that point, the author says that a 21 year old Rand 
who doesn't know how to talk to women or what a city looks like is less believable than a 17 year old one. I am not sure I buy that. Uh, keep in mind, all of the characters think the other characters are great at talking to girls. That's sort of the running joke between Perrin, Matt, and Rand. It's their own ability that they doubt. So Rand essentially has been promised to Egwene for a long time. He has no problem talking to her. He just finds her frustrating. I think at its core, this is a false assumption, and it's not a defining characteristic of the characters, it's just an ongoing joke. His other assertion, though, is the one that I have a bigger problem with. He says in the article that Jordan's books have plenty of darkness, but are also somewhat conservative and eschew graphic violence and sex. This is a complete fallacy in people's perceptions of the book, in my opinion. Let's start by conceding one point to him. Robert Jordan, in the Wheel of Time books at least, did not do much in the way of sex. It isn't described graphically, there's a lot of implied sex, but it is never the focus, really, of a scene outside of one or two instances like igloo sex. Won't spoil that, but igloo sex. However, there is literally a ton of non-sexual nudity in the series. To be frank, the amount of nudity in The Wheel of Time is far greater than the amount of nudity in A Song of Ice and Fire. If the books were adapted completely literally, we'd have massive amounts of nudity on the show that would far surpass anything Game of Thrones did. There are entire scenes where people are topless for the whole time, from multiple cultures. Lots and lots of naked people. The Aiel are just naked, period. But the most egregious part of this article is something that I've been beating the drum on for years. The fact that people think the Wheel of Time is not graphically violent completely confuses me. The books are extremely violent. People literally blow up and their guts cover people. There are people vomiting on battlefields because of how disgusting people blowing up is. There's torture, rape, people being nailed to doors, dismemberment, decapitations, murders cooking people alive in a pot, horrific looking monsters. Just because they don't use four letter words and describe sex in descriptive detail, somehow people have the idea that Wheel of Time is YA and non-violent and that is just completely untrue. Which brings me back to the article. The idea that making the actors older is a pathway to making the show more violent and with more nudity is probably true in one regard, in the same way they needed to make Daenerys older in the Game of Thrones show because they don't need a 13 year old being nude and having sex with Khal Drogo, so they aged her up so it was appropriate to what they did in the books. So that is a lot of what I think they're gonna do. I have a problem with this article. It may end up being true, but I think he's making a lot of jumps in there. What do you guys think of the article? Do you agree with me or do you think the author of the article has it right? Let me know in the comments of the video. Now, it isn't just Screen Rant and TV Guide that have been featuring articles about the Wheel of Time, though. There are articles on Sci-Fi Wire and Tech Advisor that have offered very detailed rundowns of what we know so far about the series, exposing the Wheel of Time to their audiences. This is just going to be the tip of the iceberg in terms of marketing, guys. Expect more and more of these types of articles to be popping up online and in print media here in the near future. We should also be getting a trailer very soon, which will be the beginning of the marketing into Overdrive, basically. It's extremely exciting, and the news is going to start coming faster and faster. So make sure you've subscribed to the channel here so you can get regular updates on everything that goes down behind the scenes, as well as publicly with relation to the TV show and the community. Now, if you're thinking it might be time for a reread of the series with the show coming out, I think you're right. And one of the best ways that you can do that is to reread the series with audible.com. The Wheel of Time audiobooks are incredibly well read by Kate Redding and Michael Kramer. They have an incredible following. They're kind of legends in this community because of how good of a job they did. And the great news is, is that the sponsor of the video, audible.com, is giving my viewers a free audiobook of your choice. And that's a great way to get started with your reread. Audible is the world's largest depository of audiobooks. And it's all for an extremely low subscription price that lets you get a new audiobook every month really heavily discounted. So how do you get your free book? Head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for the free trial. You'll get the book and you get to keep it regardless of whether you keep the service or not. Thank you to Audible and let's get back to the video. So one thing I am super happy to have been a part of in this community happened last week. The crew over at Twatcast hosted a 24 hour live stream charity event for Save the Children. Podcasters and YouTubers from all over the Wheel of Time community participated and raised money for the charity, and genuinely, we had a great time as well. We had a goal of raising $5,000, but the community really turned out 
And by the end of the streams, we raised $11,000 and more than doubled the goal. If you missed the streams, you can go back and watch them still. I got to participate with my Tarval and After Dark squad. We did bits from our podcast. It was a lot of fun. I think a lot of people had fun. We raised over $2,000 in our in our time slot, which was awesome. You can still donate if you missed your chance. I'll have those links in the description of this video if you want to make sure to get a donation. Is It's a great charity. Thank you to all of you that already donated and participated. Also this past week, my friend Lauren over at Unraveling the Pattern released another entry in his long-running YouTube series called Watt 101. Now these are a series of fairly short videos, typically between four and 10 minutes long that showcase non-spoiler information from the Wheel of Time dedicated to various topics in the series. Now this week he released a video all about Sidar. So Lauren has other videos though featuring areas on the map, different cities, locations, themes from the books. These are all really fun for you to watch but also fun for people that are getting started with the series and want to watch some content but maybe not spoiler content. This stuff is great for it. Now if you aren't familiar Lauren makes some of the highest quality Wheel of Time content out there and I've already collaborated with him on multiple occasions. We have another entry in our Wheel of Time Battle video series coming up here soon with the Battle of Falma. You can check out our previous video, The Battle of the Two Rivers. That's uh, a video that's showing somewhere here. Check that out. Make sure to follow his channel and give him a subscription if you have not already. And check out the Watt 101 series. Last week's contest was a Wheel of Time meme contest based on released pictures in the Entertainment Weekly article. We had some great entries. Uh, going across your screen right now are some of the entries that didn't win, but I thought were awesome. But let's hit the winner. This week's winner in the contest is James from Wheel Up Time for his wonderful Matt Hatch in Egwene meme. Now, yes, this is loosely based on the pictures I talked about, but Egwene's face is in it from the, the pics, and so that works. And anything that has the innkeeper in it is going to get points in my book. James, make sure to message me on Discord, and I will get you your $50 gift card to shopwheelofTime.com. And so lastly, let's hit this week's contest. This one's going to be real simple. I'll be giving away a North Harbor t-shirt this week with your choice of color and size. And the entry is super simple. As always, you need to be subscribed to the channel to be eligible. But all you have to do this week is leave a comment on the video letting me know which character you are looking forward to seeing adapted on the TV show most. Also, let me know why. I'll pick a name from those of you that do that and I will announce the winner on next week's news video. I release news videos every Friday. I have a contest every Friday. So always tune in for that. So that's it for this week. What did you guys think of the news? Make sure to let me know in the comments of the video. Enormous and huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. You make these videos possible and you guys are amazing. If you want to become a patron and support not only the channel, but also thegreatbite.com, click the link in the description of the video and sign up. You'll get some really cool perks. Thank you to everybody that supports me. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like the video again, subscribe to the channel, all of that jazz. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?